Hello and welcome guys, my name is Steve and this is GoForTooth. So for those of you who are new to this channel, this channel is about the Go programming language, so consider subscribing if you aren't already. So in today's tutorial, we're going to continue our work regarding the Reminder CLI application, which we started last time. So if you're not on the same page with us, make sure to check out this video. So what exactly are we building in this tutorial? Well, in this tutorial, we're going to build the Notify service, which is that part which requires JavaScript or Node.js. And I promise you guys, from now on, we're not going to use any JavaScript or Node.js. We're just going to write Go code. So feel free to skip this tutorial if you want to skip the JavaScript part. So I'll see you in the next video in that case. So what exactly is the Notify service for our application? Well, basically the Notify service is an HTTP server which is going to receive some input, process it and send us an OS notification. So basically after that we can take that notification and mark it as completed or delayed for a certain period of time. So before we jump into anything I want to talk about dependencies because there are some dependencies which we need in order to run Node.js applications or JavaScript applications on the server side. So we basically need Node.js obviously and we need a package manager for that. So basically I'm going to use Yarn package manager but you could also use npm that works perfectly fine we're also going to need some third-party dependencies which we're going to install with yarn or npm and that is express body parser and node notifier so basically express is going to give us the http server we're looking for body parser is basically going to help us parse the request body and node notifier basically is going to give us that service which is responsible for sending os notifications so before we install third-party packages let me go ahead and show you where exactly is node.js and yarn so if you open up your browser, you should basically be able to type in download Node.js. So basically the first page which shows up, this is the one. You open this up, you select the installer, and that is pretty much it on Node.js. Basically that is how you install Node.js, just follow the instructions. So to make sure you have installed Node.js correctly and it's configured properly, open up your terminal and type in node dash dash version, and you should basically see a version down there. If you see a version down there, it means Node.js has installed successfully. Also, if you installed Node.js, in most of the cases, you should also have npm package manager installed. So to check that, make sure you open up your terminal and type in npm dash dash version, and you should also see a version down there. Now, if you have installed npm successfully, you don't need yarn package manager. However, I'm going to use yarn package manager. So let me go ahead and show you where exactly that is, if you want to use that as well. So if you open up your browser, you should be able to type in install yarn, and basically the first page which shows up, this is the one, you open this up, you select your operating system and basically follow the instruction just in case of the Node.js and that is pretty much it on Yarn as well. To make sure you have Yarn installed successfully, open up your terminal and as well type Yarn minus minus version and you should see a version down there. So if you see a version down there, it means you have Yarn installed and that is pretty much it on Yarn as well. If you have all these dependencies successfully installed, it means we can start working on the Notify service. Next, let's talk about the HTTP server. So we said that the Notify service is basically an HTTP server which has some endpoints. So basically this HTTP server has two endpoints. One of them is health. So basically the health endpoint is going to tell the client which consumes our notify service if our notify service is up and running by responding with 200 status which basically means success and then we have another endpoint slash notify which is basically the endpoint which is going to give us an os notification so we can mark it as completed or delayed for a certain period of time so basically after the notify service is going to give us an os notification the http server is going to wait for us to give it a response so basically we're going to have the OS notification and the server is going to wait for us to mark it as completed or delayed for a certain period of time. Now, in our case, that wait period is going to be about 15 seconds and that is nothing else but the HTTP timeout. So basically, after 15 seconds, we're just going to expire the request or we're going to time out the request and basically we're just going to return from the server. And then after that, the server is going to return a response which looks like this JSON. So basically, from this JSON, we're most likely interested into activation type and we're also interested into activation value. So basically, if the activation type is closed, it means the user user marked it as completed. If the activation type is something else, we're going to have to check the activation value. And the activation value is basically going to be the value for the reminder to be retried after a certain period of time. And now that we know all this, let's go ahead and build up the Notify service. So inside the project, we're most likely going to be working with the Notifier directory. So basically, we have here Notifier.js and Package.json. So speaking of dependencies, let's go ahead and install those dependencies which the Notify service needs. So if you open up Package.json, last time we just created a valid JSON. So inside this object, make sure you create a key called Dependencies. So basically, this is going to be an object and it's going to have some keys. So basically, these keys are going to be the dependencies. And the first key is going to be Body Parser. So make sure you type in Body 
dash parser and we're going to use version 1.19.0. Another dependency we're going to add here is express. So make sure you type in express and we're going to use version 4.17.1. And we're also going to add node notifier. So make sure to type in node dash notifier and we're going to use version 6.0.0. .0. So after we configure package.json properly, now let's go ahead and run an npm or yarn command in order to install these dependencies. So make sure you open up your terminal and cd into the project by saying cd go path and source slash github.com slash gopher tooth slash reminder cli. After that, let's go ahead and cd into the notifier directory. CD notifier and then here we have notifier.js and package.json. Now if you're using npm, it should install the dependencies exactly the same. I'm gonna use yarn in order to install these dependencies required for the notify service. And I'm just gonna say yarn install. So basically yarn install is gonna look into the package.json and install all those dependencies which we type by hand. If you say npm install, it's gonna do exactly the same thing. To make sure all the dependencies have installed correctly, make sure you open up the project inside your IDE or text editor and you should have something like node modules. So basically Basically, node modules is a big thing. It's a lot of dependencies here, but basically it installed the dependencies we need in order to run the notify service. Now that we successfully installed all the third party packages, which the notify service is going to need, let's open up notifier.js and start building the application. So open up notifier.js. So the first thing we're going to do here is import the express server. So basically we're going to say const express equals require express. Now let's go ahead and create an HTTP server from express by saying const app equals express and just call express as a function. After that, let's create another constant for the HTTP port. The server is going to run on by saying const port and it's going to equal to process.env.port or it's going to equal to 9. So basically by saying process.env.port, we said use the port environment variable or use the 9000 port by default. Now let's go ahead and make the HTTP server listen on that port we just created by saying app.listen and basically providing the port here. So after the application server is up and running, we're going to run an anonymous function to print something on the terminal. Open parentheses, close parentheses and this arrow and console.log and basically let's print some message by saying server is up and running on port let's say I don't know port so that is pretty much it on the HTTP server. It's pretty much done. And if you open up another terminal and you run node notifier.js, basically that log we just printed inside the anonymous function should print on the terminal. Next, let's go ahead and open up the IDE or text editor and create that health endpoint. So inside your IDE, make sure to open up notifier.js and inside notifier.js, let's create another endpoint by saying app.get. So we're going to use get HTTP method and let's call this function. So basically the first argument is gonna be a string, which is basically the path. So let's say slash health. And the second argument is gonna be a function called with request and response. So basically it's gonna be a function called with request and response. And we're gonna send a response from this function by saying res.status and we're gonna just return 200 to indicate everything is okay. And we're just gonna call the send method which is going to send this status to the client as a response. So we have successfully created the health endpoint. Now let's go ahead and test this out. So we're going to use something called Postman in order to test our endpoint. So if you don't know what Postman is, open up your browser and just type in download Postman. So basically the first page which shows up, this is the one. You just open this page, you download Postman for your machine and basically you will have Postman and you'll be able to test our endpoints. So once you downloaded Postman, open it up and you should look something like this. So basically here you have the method, the HTTP method and here you have the URL. So as you can tell from the code, we're going to use the HTTP get method because that's what we wrote in the code. We said app.get and we're going to use the path slash help. So before you open up Postman and test the endpoint, make sure the server is up and running by opening your terminal and say node notifier.js. So now the server is up and running, as you can tell, on port 9000. So the method we're going to use, we're going to use HTTP GET. We don't have to change anything because that's what we set inside the application when we wrote the code. And then the path is going to be localhost to indicate this is our host machine. And we're going to use port 9000 because that is what we configured inside the application. And we're also going to say slash health 
to indicate this is the endpoint we want to call. Apparently, you should receive nothing, but if you look at the status, the status should be 200 OK, which is exactly what we return from the server. So that is pretty much it on the health endpoint. Now let's jump into the next endpoint. So let's open up our project and import body parser, which is the middleware, which is going to transform the request body into JSON so we can use it inside the controllers. So let's import body parser by creating a simple constant. Const body parser equals require and body dash parser. So now that we imported body parser, let's go ahead and use this middleware inside Express. So in order to create a middleware in Express, it's very simple. You just say app.use and inside use you have to provide in the middleware function. So basically the middleware function it's inside body parser. So you just say body parser dot JSON. So basically this is the middleware function which is going to take that request, transform it into JSON and pass it to the controller. Now let's go ahead and create the endpoint for sending an OS notification. So right after app.get you should say app.post. So this time we're not going to use get, we're going to use post because we need request body. So we're going to say app.post and the first argument is going to be allocation. So we're going to say slash notify and the second argument as usual it's a callback function which gets called with request and response. Request response and basically here we're going to do something like this. Here we're going to call a function which doesn't yet exist. We're going to create it very soon but here we're going to call a function called notify and notify is going to get called with the request body request.body and the next argument is going to be a callback function which gets called with a reply object. So basically callback function which gets called with reply and we want to do something with this reply object. So basically we're just going to send this reply object to the client who called this endpoint. So we're going to say response.send and we're going to send over the reply. Now let's go ahead and create this notify function. So in order to create this notify function we're going to add in a couple of lines const notify and equals to function. So basically this function as we said earlier receives a couple of arguments. So basically the first one is going to be request body but we don't need the entire request body we just need a couple of properties that's why we're going to destructure the request body and just take whatever we need. So we need something like title and we need message. So basically this is the title of a reminder and this is the message of a reminder. So the first argument is the request body we just destructured and the second argument is the callback function we're just going to call it cb. So inside this function we have to send the OS notification but before we do so let's just return something dummy inside the callback so that we can test this out with Postman. So basically we're just going to call callback and we're just going to pass over some string. Let's say some string. Now let's go ahead and run the Node.js server and test this endpoint inside Postman. So inside your terminal make sure to type in node notifier.js and we started the server. Now let's go ahead and open up Postman and test this endpoint. So basically the method is going to be post and we're going to have the same local host port 9000 but this time we're not going to have health we're going to have slash notify. So basically when you make a request you receive that reply string. You receive that object. So it's supposed to be a JSON object. It's supposed to be that JSON object which I showed you before in the presentation. However, right now we're just returning the string just to make sure this endpoint works. Right now let's go ahead and import the node notifier and configure it properly so we actually send an OS notification inside the notify function. So first let's go ahead and import the node notifier package. So after body parser let's say const notifier equals require and inside require we're going to say node dash notifier. So inside the notify function make sure to delete this callback which we had earlier and let's call notifier dot notify and this function accepts two arguments. The first one is going to be an object which we're going to fill later and the second one is a callback function which gets called whenever we mark a reminder as completed or we delayed for a certain period of time or there's an HTTP timeout or the request has been expired. So this one is a callback function which has three arguments error response and the reply object which I talked about earlier. So basically this is going to be a callback function and inside this callback function we want to call this callback function which was passed as an argument from the endpoint. So let's go ahead and say cb and pass in the reply here. So now that we called this callback function let's go ahead and fill this object in order for the OS notification to be sent properly to us. So the first property which we must have is title and title is going to equal to title which comes in from the request body right here or if no title was passed in the request body it's going to be something like unknown title. Now besides the title property you also have the message property message 
it's going to be a message from the request body or if no message was passed in the request body it's just going to be unknown message and next we have a couple of optional properties so the first one is going to be sound whether we want the notification to have a sound of course we want that the next one is going to be wait true so basically wait equals true means we're going to have to wait for the user in order to mark the reminder as completed or delayed for a certain period of time or it's just going to expire after the timeout period and next we have the reply property so basically the reply property tells the node notifier that we basically want to give an input back from the os notification we want to delay a specific reminder with a specific period of time so that's why we need reply equals true and then we have another property called close label which basically signifies the label of the notification. So basically we're gonna have something like completed or not because a reminder can be completed or not. So let's say something like completed. And we're gonna have another property called timeout and it's gonna be equal to 15 seconds. And we wanna wait 15 seconds because I think that's the amount of time which is enough for the user to mark the reminder as completed or to just delay it for a certain period of time by inputting some duration over there. So basically after 15 seconds, the HTTP request is gonna be timed out or expired. All right, so now that we filled out this config object for the node notifier let's go ahead and start the server and test this endpoint inside postman so open up your terminal again and you should be able to type in node notifier.js and the server is up and running on port 9000 so inside postman let's just go ahead and click send and see what happens so when you click send an os notification comes up and basically it's going to say unknown title and unknown message because we did not provide anything in the request body and as you can see it's saying sending request and actually the server is waiting right now until it's going to expire so basically we received this json from the server saying activation type timeout so basically it waited 15 seconds and nothing happened no user input came and basically after 15 seconds it just expired the request it just expired it and returned a response so in order to avoid things like unknown title and unknown message we have to send the request body so in order to send the request body in postman all you have to do is go into the body section and from here you have to choose json and let's go ahead and type in some json some request body say title some title and let's go ahead and say message some message and now when you make this http call the os notification is going to look proper it's going to say title some title and message some message so you can mark it as completed or reply to it so let's go ahead and mark this as completed so when you mark this as completed it's going to say activation type closed and it's going to say activation value completed because well that's basically a boolean value now to make the os notification a little more interesting and appealing let's also add an icon so we know who's sending us an os notification so inside the project inside the notifier directory i also copied an image called gopher2s.png so let's go ahead and use this image for the os notification so we have the os notification a little more customized so we know who's sending us an os notification so inside the config object you should have another property called icon and icon is going to be path dot join and let's say dir name which is the current directory and let's say gopher toots png and let's also go ahead and import path by saying const path equals require path and now let's go ahead and open up postman and test this endpoint but before actually opening postman don't forget to restart your node.js server so inside the terminal we're just going to say node notifier.js and we restarted the server now let's go ahead and open up postman and inside postman i'm not going to change anything about the request and when you hit send as you can see you have a custom icon you have the title you have the message you can mark the reminder as completed you could reply with a specific value so if you mark it as completed it's going to say activation type closed and it's going to give you this value however if you send another request the response body is going to be a little bit different so let's go ahead and send another request send as you can see you have the same icon you have the title you have the message let's go ahead and say reply let's say two seconds as you can see here we have activation type replied and we have activation value two seconds and this values activation type and activation value basically are going to be the values which are going to be used by the http backend api all right guys that is pretty much it on the notifier service and from now on we're not going to write any javascript code we're just going to write go code so if you like this video and you think somebody else may benefit from it make sure to like it and share it and subscribe if you aren't already and i'll see you guys in the next video